Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book that you see in front of you, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is look at some aerodynamic specials that have been built over the years, cars that you've probably never seen nor heard of. And we're starting off with the 1938 Porsche Type 64, an extraordinary looking car. It was built for the Berlin-Rome long distance race that was scheduled for mid-September 1939, but of course, World War II happened, and so the car never ran in competition. It was based on a very early Volkswagen chassis. Of course, what we now know as the Beetle was being developed just prior to World War II, and this was based on one of those chassis. The body, though, was nothing like the uh, Beetle body. It was formed from aluminium, hand-formed around uh, wooden formers, and how slippery was it? Well, amazingly slippery. It had only 32 horsepower, and yet it could still do 81 miles an hour. And if we look at the rear three quarters view, you can see you would have had attached flow all the way across here and all the way down to what's now a very small wake. And uh, I photographed this car in the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, Germany, and I was the only person I saw that uh, lay down on the floor and looked underneath the car, a dead flat underbody. This is a replica, and you can see it, as I say, in the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart. Let's have a look now at another car. Uh, this is one that you'll all recognize, but what you probably don't realize is its aerodynamic development. So this is the prototype of the Volkswagen Transporter. The, the uh, Volkswagen Transporter was released in 1950, but this is the 1949 prototype. I photographed it in the uh, Wolfsburg German uh, Volkswagen Museum. And what I want you to look at particularly are these leading edges, this front corner, and of course the corner on the other side. When the car was first built, it had much squarer front corners, and when they put a model in the wind tunnel, they found it had a drag coefficient of 0.76. Why? Because there was separated flow all the way down the side of the car. The flow was separating at what was then this sharp corner. So they rounded off those front corners, and the drag coefficient dropped by an incredible 45% to just 0.42. Now you might think 0.42 is not a very good drag coefficient, but it's an awful lot better than 0.76. I think the Volkswagen Transporter is probably the only vehicle sequence, the only vehicle series that's been developed in wind tunnels ever since the very first one. An extraordinary story, I think. Let's go now to a land speed record car. This is the MG EX181 of 1957. Yep, 1957. It looks amazingly like more recent solar race cars, and that's because they were chasing extremely low drag. The vehicle's drag coefficient was just 0.12. It ran a supercharged 1.5 litre twin cam four cylinder, which developed 290 horsepower. A little bit uh, later, it developed even more power, and it ran firstly at 245 miles an hour, and then a bit later at 254 miles an hour, just under 255 miles an hour, in fact. So 255 miles an hour from just a 1.5 litre twin cam four cylinder, although it was supercharged, amazingly slippery car. Here's something a bit different, 1948. The Panhard Dynavia. It was running a 600cc engine. It was obviously tracing really low drag with that shape, but did it succeed? Well, it had only 28 horsepower, very, very little, and yet it could do 81 miles an hour. And the reason I'm talking about engine power and top speed is that's by far the best way of assessing the slipperiness of older cars, where often their drag coefficients are, are misquoted or weren't measured or calculated properly in the first place. Having said all that, this full-size car was supposed to have a 0.26 drag coefficient, um, with that uh, amount of power and with that speed, it was certainly slippery. Whether it was 0.26, we'd have to test it in a modern wind tunnel to find out. Here's something a bit different. May 1972, the beautiful BMW 3 CSL, designed for touring car racing in the European Touring Car Championship. Things to look out for are the very deep front spoiler because the underside of the car is rough. You don't want air going under it. These days with smooth undersides, you want air going under it. These front fences on the guards to stop air flowing over the edges 
and this rooftop uh, flow director that directs the flow downwards to better impact on the rear wing. So uh, these days we probably use uh, vortex generators to get the flow to attach around the rear window. There they had that very large air guide. Unfortunately, no aerodynamic data is available on the car, no lift figures, no downforce figures, if in fact it was developing that, no drag figures, but uh, certainly in racing it was very successful at one five consecutive Group 2 racing seasons, and uh, as an aerodynamic special, I still think it's one of the prettiest ones that's ever been created. Here's something to really raise your eyebrows. This is the Mercedes Type 80 and it was a car designed to win the land speed record. Designed in Nazi Germany, it did not run because of the advent of World War II. Very slippery, and it had those wings either side to develop downforce. You don't even sort of realize that they're wings until you start looking at them. It also had large tail fins, large coverings of the wheels to help give stability in side view. And if you were to stand here and look at the front, you can see that the frontal area, the projected frontal area, is very, very low. So what was the claimed drag coefficient? Just 0.18. And they weren't skimping on power. They had a Daimler-Benz DB600 V12, which was estimated to be producing up to 3,500 horsepower. How fast could it have run if it had run? Well, looking at uh, other record cars of the same period and after World War II, um, it probably could have achieved about uh, 400 miles an hour, something of that order. But it never ran, so we will never know. And the last one in this video is a concept car which I think has largely been overlooked because it had so many things which we've seen follow its development occurring now in road cars. So it was the Ford Probe 4 and it was built in 1983. It had a drag coefficient of just 0.153. And how did it achieve it? Well, some of these things will sound very familiar because they're quite common on today's car. It used a flat floor. It used flush side glass. It used shape deflectors before the front tires and before and after the rear tires. It had actively controlled ride height from air suspension. And we don't see that in too many low drag cars these days. And most excitingly, it had side-mounted radiators for the engine radiator and for the air conditioning condenser. Air was drawn in the side and then it was blown out the back by a fan. So it actually had a blown wake. It was actually putting air into the wake, which helped decrease drag even more than it otherwise would have been. When I say it had a front, uh, a flat uh, underfloor, it uh, certainly had a flat underfloor because even the exhaust pipe was carried above the underfloor. It ran in an insulated conduit so that it didn't set fire to anything. At the front, these skirts were flexible. So when the wheels were turned, they had little Lotus 7 style mudguards inside and those Lotus 7 style mudguards bumped into the flexible side skirt which deformed it without the wheel actually running on it. And you can see it also had a low front spoiler. Interesting it had a low front spoiler considering that they were running a flat underfloor. Um, you wonder if that was actually needed. An extraordinary car. Uh, if you want to read more about it, I highly recommend the Society of Engineers uh, Automotive Engineers paper. It's uh, 831000 and it still has lessons for people developing low drag cars today, especially in those rear side mounted radiators and the blown wake. The book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. I have a whole chapter, chapter two, on significant aerodynamic cars going right back uh, to the turn of the century and covering also the cars that you've seen in this video. Thank you.